So in today's video, we're going to be talking about two different topics that pertain to money, cost of things in the gaming world. I was going to do these two different things as more of a news type video, and then I kind of waited. I wasn't feeling the greatest yesterday, still not today, uh, but I wanted to discuss them and, and talk about them because they're two different things that are just kind of crazy in their own regard if you will so we're gonna jump into this if you guys do enjoy this one be sure to leave a like subscribe for more we do a variety of gaming content here on the channel talk about the games play the games everything from you know let's plays and walkthroughs and guides to news videos discussions different things like that so kind of the best of all, all all gaming i just i love talking about games and i love playing the games so i hope you guys enjoy that mix of content okay so first things first um let's go ahead and talk about the hogwarts legacy collector's edition okay because the last time we talked about it, it was just kind of, you know, uh, taking a look at the unboxing that they did of it. It looks really cool. They have this technology in it um, that, you know, uh, you plug it in and I guess, you know, with electricity and, you know, science, right? Uh, it causes the wand to float on top of the book, right? Which is really, really cool. But here's the thing. The price just came out for this thing because pre-orders went live yesterday at the time of recording this. Uh, it went, uh, pre-orders went live August 25th, currently recording this on on the 26th and so we've officially seen the actual price for this thing um and it's 300 dollars usd and if you're in if you're in the us you're probably already like whoa man that's insane uh but if you're in canada like me it is four hundred dollars let me put that into perspective for anyone who doesn't know canadian currency let, let me explain what i can do with that money with that money i could buy uh the nintendo switch oled which is a just a little bit more uh so if i go over to gamestop.ca which is the canadian gamestop and let's say we look up the nintendo switch oled we're doing this live okay discussion type videos for the win the oled is about 50 okay 50 bucks more uh it's like 450 so you pay 50 bucks more and and you get a nintendo switch oled or you get the normal nintendo switch which i believe is like um i think it's like three something right uh if they sell if they still sell those i'm not actually sure i can't find it right now anyways so there's that right uh the xbox series s i believe is pretty a pretty good price yeah the xbox series s is actually cheaper it's 380 i can get an xbox series s for 380 dollars okay now listen i know there's already people out there that are probably gonna you know roast me for saying this listen um I'm a pretty big Harry Potter fan. Maybe not the biggest. Obviously, there's bigger ones. Um, but I was I was really hoping this was going to be priced, you know, at a fair price point. I just think it's overpriced. I've seen a ton of collector's editions in my life. Some that I've bought, some that I skipped out on. The ones that I skipped out on and the ones I bought, I would I would I would be the first one to say that you know most of them have been priced fairly for what they were offering, in my opinion. Whether they were you know something that I was interested in or not. This is something that I was very interested in, but I'm skipping because of that price tag and what is offered. Now, if you don't know what is offered, um, let me throw it up on screen so you guys can take a look. So this is what's offered. This is the collector's edition, okay? So for 400 US dollars, you are getting some dark arts uh, cosmetics, right? Which you can get the deluxe edition for hundred bucks and that's included with it. Uh, you also get 72 hours early access and some, some other cosmetic stuff, right? You also get as you mostly usually do with uh you know collector's editions a steel case and the steel case looks beautiful the art on it looks gorgeous but then they also say you get a collector's edition box which is kind of weird that they're kind of you know uh marketing this as as a thing like the the box is cool don't get me wrong but how many people keep the box and the box is cardboard right so people you know i mean for the most part it's a cardboard box it's not like if, it, if this was made out of like steel or if it was made out of like you know good quality wood that'd be great but it's not it's just cardboard and then beyond that we have the the main kind of uh, piece here which is the floating wand and the book base now the book base if you take a look at the unboxing video it's plastic it's it has like the map of, of hogwarts on it it's really cool uh but it's a it's a chunk of plastic basically with some electronics inside that you plug in with an ac adapter that causes through the, you know the power of science to make the wand levitate or you know has that illusion right and that's really cool but here's the thing that in terms of just the offering in and of itself i don't think that's worth 400 dollars canadian now um I, i'm going to compare it to something in a second here but what i will just say is that if if it's the whole 
sciencey thing behind it that's you know making the price you know more expensive then it would have been better if they just stuck like one of those ultra clear kind of you know uh stands out of the middle of the book that you would rest the the wand on i get this is a you know this is really cool and adds kind of a, a sense of magic to it and i get that it's really cool but if that's what's causing it to be 50 to 100 bucks more than it should be in my opinion then it would have just been better to cut that out and and sell more of them and more people you know uh probably like i've seen a lot of people respond saying like man i, I wanted to get it but i'm not going to get it because of the price tag i've seen a lot of people also say they're still getting it um but i've seen a lot of people saying that they're skipping out because it's just like man for what's what's offered here the price tag it just ain't worth it um and it kind of sucks now i don't like to make comparisons because you know ev obviously everything is its own thing but just really quick before we move on to the second piece of uh you know the topic for today uh, i do want to just kind of compare it to one of the most recent ones uh which is god of war ragnarok right so in um, again i'm going off of canadian currency the for for that the the collector's edition um is is uh i think it's like 250 bucks canadian i'm gonna look it up right now so god of war ragnarok yeah it's 250 bucks canadian and you get like way more with it uh so you get um, the steel book, right? Similar, you get the steel book, and you get the, kind of the main piece, which is going to be the Mjolnir um, replica, which uh, looks like a pretty solid replica. It looks like a, a very fine piece of craftsmanship. Uh, and then, of course, you also get the downloadable content as well, right? So similar. At this point, we're we're, we're similar to what Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition is offering, but you also get these two. Um, I, I I guess I don't know if they're handcrafted, but they're they're these two. Uh, twins carvings, uh, which are, are really nice. And you get um, these like Dungeon and Dragons kind of dice set. There's like, what, six dice? And it looks like a solid kind of uh, dice set with a little felt bag. That's just the, the collector's edition at 250. For I think it's like 300 bucks. Can and, and remember, this is Canadian, you know, currency. So for $150 Canadian less, um, you're getting more stuff with it for the Jotner edition you also get um you get like a better quality dice set you get uh this really cool map and it's not just like on cheap paper you get um also this felt red felt bag with a with a ring in it i think it's like stainless steel or whatever as well you also get um a couple other things i think there's like a vinyl of the soundtrack and stuff and that one's like i think 300 bucks so still 100 bucks cheaper than the hogwarts one so i mean for for the hogwarts legacy collector's edition if they would have thrown thrown in like a vinyl soundtrack on top of that and maybe a couple other tidbits it would have sweetened the deal and it would have made it worth more of the price but for what's included i just think it's overpriced and that's kind of the rant i went on just now we just spent like eight minutes of this video on that okay let's let's wrap this up those are just my thoughts i, I again i'm not like everybody could spend their money on what they want i just think in terms of like what's being offered i just don't see it man for this collector's edition like i said I, I i haven't said this about many other collector's editions if any and there's been a ton of them that you know between what i've seen between what i've actually bought you know etc so Take it out, you will. Let me know your thoughts about that one. Last thing I want to talk about is going to be, again, related to money, and that's PlayStation. PlayStation has decided uh, Sony is increasing the price of the PS5 in select markets, which is going to include Europe, UK, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico, and Canada, here in Canada. So in Canada, again, I'm, I got to go off Canadian prices. I don't know how much the difference is going to be in other places. I, you know what I just realized? I don't see the United States in this in this list. Why is why is Canada and Mexico, which are both part of, of North America, included in this list, but not the United States? That's really weird. Anyways, in Canada, it's about twenty to thirty dollars more per console, uh, which is kind of weird. I think it's like twenty bucks more. Yeah. So like the digital edition is normally like four ninety nine Canadian, uh, and now it's five nineteen five nineteen ninety nine. So that's an extra twenty bucks. Um, and then the same thing with the disc drive, it's six fifty Canadian. I don't know. Again, I don't know what that converts to in USD. Um, but what's weird is the reasoning is due to the global economic environment. You know, due to inflation and this and that and that's why they're 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 increasing the price now here's the kicker both nintendo and xbox well i guess nintendo and microsoft technically speaking confirmed they they have no plans to increase the price um 
Nintendo actually technically did increase the price, but in a very clever way, which is coming out with the OLED model. But then again, OLED does cost more. I don't know. Anyways, we're not going to get into those technicalities. The point being is they confirmed they're not going to, they have no, you know, price increases in, 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 uh, in the plans. Now, here's the other thing worth noting about this is the fact that consoles, okay, with the PS5, Sony has confirmed that they're they're made, they're already selling it at a profit. Before this price hike, they were already selling the console at a profit. And if you don't know, consoles are usually sold at a loss. So like for them for I mean I, I I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure like the Xbox Series X and Series S are not being sold at a profit. They might be, I don't know. They might be, I'm, I'm not sure, but I know like last console generation, PS4, Xbox One, they're being sold at a loss because typically where they kind of recoup a, a lot of their, um, their, 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 you know, money, if you will, their finances, their revenue is with the software sales, right? They sell you the hardware at a little bit of a loss, um, but then they, they they make tons of money off of the, the software itself. And that's kind of how that usually typically works. But but in this case, Sony was always already making profit off the PS5 and yet they still hiked it, you know, even at that. So it's kind of weird. A lot of people are scratching their heads like, really, like, did you did you need to do that? Did you really need to do that? Um, I think it was an unnecessary price increase. They, they, should, they didn't need to do that. It was, you know, they were already sell, selling it at a profit. Um, and I think that was kind of pointless. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. So money, that was the topic of this episode. Of this episode. I don't know why I called it an episode with this video. Let me know what you guys think about all this uh, down in the comments below. Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition. Do you think it's overpriced? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? It's fine if you disagree. You know, we can disagree in life. I know the internet makes it seem like disagreeing with people is like the worst thing ever. It's not. If you disagree with me, let me know. And, you know, let me know what you think of uh, the Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition and its price point and also what do you think of the whole thing with sony hiking up the ps5 price let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave it a like subscribe for more and i'll see you guys very soon another one stay safe stay well and until then game on